The third thing is that if I take the name Zayd and I change it to Musa, so Zayd's changing, first of all, was it explicit or implicit? It was explicit, meaning we could all see it. It was clear cut, everyone could see it. Zaydun, Zaydan, Zaydin. It was what? It was explicit. But if I take the name Zayd down and I change it to the word, the name Musa, there's a changing here going to be explicit or implicit. Let's try it. Ja'a Musa. Ra'aytu Musa. Marartu bi Musa. Has Musa changed? Musa has changed. But it's not explicit. What is it? It's implicit. So we do the same thing that we do to Zayd, we do to Musa, but we'll just say Musa, it's implicit. Okay? So we say, Ja'a Musa, Musa is marfu' here. Ja'a Musa, Musa here is marfu' Ra'aytu Musa, Musa is here mansub. Marartu bi Musa, Musa here is majroor. But we say, Takdiran. The, 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 the haraka, uh, the alama of it here is muqaddar. Meaning our eyes can't see it. It's not lafzan. It is not apparent. Okay? So those are the three points that a student of knowledge has to observe. Yeah, the last one is lafzan or taqdira. I will say, he said. Now we're going to go into the shalah of who? Muhammad Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid. وأقول, I will say, الإعراب له معنيان. إعراب has two meanings. أحدهما لغوي. One is a linguistic definition. والآخر اصطلاحي. And the second one is a technical definition. The technical definition according to the grammarians. أما معناه في اللغة. As for its meaning in the linguistic uh, meaning, uh, uh, as for its linguistic meaning is al idharu is something to be apparent. Wal ibana. The word i'rab linguistically means al idhar wal ibana. Idhar and ibana both mean the same. Something to become clear. Something to become apparent. The i'rab means, for example, the Arabs they say, a'rab tu amma fi nafsi. I a'rab tu a'rab tu amma fi nafsi means what? I have made it apparent that which was within me. Are you with me? أَعْرَبْتُ عَمَّا فِي نَفْسِي I have made it apparent that which I had inside my heart. Everyone now knows it. You see, it's أَعْرَبْتُ The word we're looking at here is أَعْرَبَ um, That's it. There's another meaning it has that the Sheikh didn't mention, but we're going to come to it, inshallah ta'ala, in our mutammimatul ajrumiya. It's taghir, changing. I'rab means also changing. Huh? For example, you say, A'rab Allahu, uh, Allah changed ma'idda, my stomach, or the way my stomach is, it got changed. Allah, you know, it hurts now. The Arabs use that as taghir as well. <laughs> Ala kulli hal, al-i'rab, linguistically, it means al-idharu wal-ibana. تقول أعربت عما في نفسي إذا أب إذا أبنته إذا أبنته وأظهرته إذا أبينته. What did you say? Uh, if you make it clear, if you make it apparent and you make it clear, it's called what? Ha? Huh? It means أعرب. أعربت عما في نفسي. I made it clear that which was within me. وأما معناه في الاصطلاح as for its so that's the linguistic meaning. As for its technical meaning, it means what? Who am I? Is that which the author has mentioned? That's the technical meaning, which is what? هو التغيير أواخر الكلمي لاختلاف العوامل الداخلة عليها لفظا أو تقديرا. Now we're going to stand over each point. Um, we're going to go through each point that the author has said. Even though I did it for you overall, but now we're going to stand over it properly. والمقصود من تغيير الأواخر الكلمي the intent of the meaning of the changing of the last word is تغيير أحوال أواخر الكلمي it means the changing of the situation of the last wording ولا يعقل because somebody might think the changing here means what 
he might think that the dal is going to change it to a ra. Are you with me? Somebody might think to himself, it might be the ra, the dal might change it to a ra. So we have to keep saying it is taghiru ahwal, the situation. Awakhir al kalimi. Wala yu'qalu, and no one should, or it shouldn't be understood as, and yurada taghiru nafsi al awakhiri. That the literal ending changes. فَإِنَّ آخِرَ الْكَلِمَةِ نَفْسَهُ لَا يَتَغَيَّرْ Because the last ending of the word itself doesn't change. وَتَغَيِّرُ أَحْوَالِ أَوَاخِرِ الْكَلِمَةِ عِبَارَةٌ عَنْ تَحَوُّلِهَا مِنَ الرَّفْعِ إِلَى النَّصْبِ أَوِ الْجَرِّ The changing of its situation, of the last ending of the word, it means the changing of it from being marfu' to mansub and to majroor. حَقِيقَةً whether it's literal or حُكْمًا or whether it's by way of ruling. وَيَكُونُ هَذَا التَّحَوُّلِ بِسَبَبِ تَغْيِيرِ الْعَوَامِلِ And that changing of the ending of the word is the reason is because of the situation changing. مِنْ عَامِلٍ يَقْتَضِ الرَّفْعَ عَلَى الْفَاعِلِيَّةِ أو نحوها Like the factor of making it مَرْفُوعِ Because of it being a فَاعِل For example, if I say to you, for example, now Ja'a Zaydun. Who caused Zayd to become marfu'? You say Ja'a. Because if Ja'a never came, would, fa- would Zaydun ever be marfu'? It would never be marfu'. As a fa'iliyah here. Are you with me? What caused it to be what? To, what caused it here, the amil that caused it here is Ja'a, the fi'l. So what causes a fi'l, sorry, something uh, to become either a fa'il or a maf'ulun bi or whatever it is, it's a amil, it's a factor. Are you with me? Min amilin yaktadi rafa al al fa'iliya. This is the fi'l. Or nahwiya or like it. Ila akhara yaktadi nasba al al maf'uliya. Who forced it here to become what? Um, uh, uh, for it to become a maf'ulun bi is that if the verb, if the verb, it, it, it becomes what? It requires a maf'ulun bi. For example, Ja'a Zaydun, does the word Ja'a require a maf'ul bi? Nah, because it's a fi'l lazim, it's not a fi'l muta'addi. It doesn't require a maf'ul bi. Like in Daraba, what does it require? Daraba Zaydun, hey, can I just stop there? No, because Daraba is a fi'l that requires a, it's a fi'l muta'addiya. So whatever the verb is, it necessitates the maf'ul bi either to come or not to come. So that's a amil. Naam? It's a amil. Oh, nahwiya. Wahalumma jarra and let the list go on. It can still go on. Okay? It goes on. Now the Sheikh is going to give an example. So before I move on to from that faqra, from that um, paragraph, what the author is saying is what I said before. The changing here, brothers, it's the, not the changing literally the dal or the letter, the harfa, the harf that's there. It means the situation is what's causing it to change. Okay? That changing is either by way of ruling or literally it changes. And there, the reason why it's changing is because there is an amil, a factor that's making it change. That factor may, may, may force it to be a what? A raf, or it may force it to be a nas, or the list can go on. Okay? Method an example. If you say, if you say, Hadara Muhammadun, Muhammad came. So Muhammadun marfu'un. Muhammad is marfu' here. Why is he marfu'? لِأَنَّهُ مَعْمُولٌ لِعَامِلٍ يَقْتَضِ الرَّفْعَ عَلَى الْفَاعِلِيَّةِ وَهَذَا الْعَامِلُ هُوَ حَذَرَ Because he is a factor, is making it to become a fa'il, which is the factor is who? Who's, who's forcing it to become? It's حَذَرَ حَذَرَ is forcing it to be. Are you with me? Good. فَإِنْ قُلْتَ If you say, رَأَيْتُ مُحَمَّدًا I saw Muhammad. تَغَيَّرَ حَالٌ حَالُ آخِرِ The change, the, the ending will now change. If you say, رَأَيْتُ مُحَمَّدًا Muhammad is not, uh, not, it's not Muhammad now, it's Muhammadan. Why? It's changed to what? إِلَى النَّصْبِ It changed to becoming Mansub. صحيح? It has. It has. Why? What's forcing it to change? لِتَغَيُّرِ الْعَامِلِ بِعَامِلٍ آخَرَ يَقْتَضِ النَّصْبَ وَهُوَ رَأَيْتُ The reason why it's now changed is because the عامل has changed, the factor has changed which necessitates it to become mansub. The عامل here is رَأَيْتُ 
رأى which is فعل ماضي the تا which is a ضمير متصل في محل رفعه فاعل the تا by itself is standing in the position of a subject so if you see a رأى does it require a verb a object of course it does it's not a فعل لازم it's a فعل متعدي فإذا قلت if you say حضيت بمحمد حضيت بمحمد um, it changed from what uh, it changed from mans marfu'un and it also changed from mansub to what majrur why because the f there is a amil that forced it to be majrur what forced muhammad here right now to be majrur تغير حال اخره الى الجر why لتغير العامل بعامل بعامل اخر يقتضي الجر وهو الباء the ba here is what's forcing it the ba is a amil that forces the noun to become what majrur you good وإذا تأملت if you observe or student of knowledge في هذه الأمثلة in these examples ظهر لك it becomes apparent for you أن آخر الكلمة the ending of the word وهو الدال the dal من محمد keep looking at the dal which is the last word لم يتغير it hasn't changed so the dal does not change it's never going to be ba or jim or ha or kha it's always going to be dal but what changed وأن الذي تغير but what changed هو أحوال آخره the situation of his changed فإنك تراه مرفوعا because in the first example which was what حضر محمد you find that it's what ها مرفوعا that it's مرفوع في المثال الأول ومنصوبا في المثال الثاني in the second example it is what منصوب رأيت محمدا ومجرورا في المثال الثالث and the third one is حضيت بمحمد it's also uh, so it changed because it became majrur. وهذا التغير وهذا التغير and that changing أما وهذا التغيير sorry وهذا التغيير that changing من حالة الرفع إلى حالة النصب إلى حالة الجري from the situation of رفع to the situation of نصب to the situation of جر هو الإعراب that's called إعراب عند المؤلف according to the author وَمَنْ ذَهَبَ مَذْهَبَهُ And those who have taken his madhab. Ha, there's another madhab. What, are, what is the other madhab? Or what, what are the two madhabs that are out there? Some people believe that, that they believe that i'rab is something which is what? Ma'nawi. It's not literal. And some believe it is literal. Uh, some believe that it's literal. And some believe it is, it is not literal. Those are the two madhabs that stand. Huh? Those are the three. Those are the two madhabs that stand. وهذه الحركات الثلاث التي هي الرفع والنصب والجر هي علامة وأمارة على الإعرابي. So what do those people say? Are you with me? Who believe it is not? It's معنوي. Those people who believe it's معنوي, who don't believe it's literal. The author here he believes it is literal. He is saying to you, the author is saying the rafع itself is the Arab. The nasb itself is an i'rab. And the jar itself is an i'rab. What about the other ones who say it is not? They're saying that the raf and the nasb and the jar are only signs for the i'rab. But that's not the i'rab. Are you with me? So if you look at their dispute, what is it called? Ikhtilafu lafzi ama ikhtilafu tanawwah. Their differences doesn't have a real impact. It doesn't really have something... There's a, there's a khilaf where when you look at it, it makes the two groups go different directions and they will come up with different results. That's not what happens here. They're both still on the same road. It's just they see the wordings different. So this khilaf is called khilaf al-lafzi. It doesn't really have much weight. But, but inshallah ta'ala, in our sharah of mutammimatul ajumi, we'll go into it a bit more. We will go into it a bit more. Alati hiya al-raf wa al-nasb wa al-jar hiya alamatu amaratu ala al-i'rab. ومثل الاسم في ذلك الفعل المضارع فلو قلت يسافر إبراهيم فيسافر فعل مضارع مرفوع so, ومثل sorry, ومثل الاسم and the example of an ism is في ذلك الفعل المضارع because all this that we took right now is who? we now we kept taking the word Muhammad which is a ism the, the likes and the example of the noun is like the fi'l mudari. 
فلو قلت if you say meaning the fi'l mudari' changes from situation to situation let's take the word for example yusafiru al-ibrahim take the word yusafiru yusafir is what it's a fi'l what fi'l is it brothers fi'l mudari' how do you know it's a fi'l mudari' so far so far we know that it's a fi'l mudari' because of what because that if we try to put a seal in it will it accept it sayusafiru would that be correct ha huh? so it's a fi'l and it's a fi'l mudari' are you with me because seen and the soul were uniquely only those who entered onto what fi'l mudari' so if i try to put it in there it will accept it so this is a fi'l mudari' good fayusafiru fayusafiru fi'l mudari' it's a fi'l mudari' marfu' it's marfu' yusafiru is what it's a fi'l mudari' it's a present verb how did we identify that it's a present verb because if we try to put seen or sofa before it, will it accept it? Yes. Because it will accept it, we learn that the only one that accepts seen and sofa is who? Fi'l mudari'. The present verb. Good. So it's marfu'. It's marfu'. Because look at the ending of the letter, or the word. The ra. The ra is marfu'. <coughs> Yusafiru. That's marfu'. Why is it marfu'? لِتَجَرُّدِهِ مِنْ عَامِنٍ يَقْتَضِي نَصْبَهُ أَوْ عَامِنٍ يَقْتَضِي جَزْمَهُ the fi'l mudari only goes through three situations and I don't want to complicate it too much onto you. But it goes only through th the, uh, the now, the verb, the fi'l mudari goes through three situations. One, it is what? It is either raf' or nasb or jazm. The raf is when there is nothing before it. Huh? The, when, when there is nothing before it. And I, I, what, what do I mean by there's nothing before it? Meaning there is no let word, I mean there's no harf, or there's, or there's no adat that go before it, that change it from either nasb to jazb. To nasb or jazb. Are you with me? So the fi'l mudari' goes through three situations. Ar-raf'u, wal-nasbu, wal-jazmu. Did I say jar? Jazmu. Very good. The two times that it becomes nasb and jaz, it's easy because you just need to learn the words that go before it that make it mansub. And they're called adawatul nasb. You just memorize them. And the next time it becomes majzum, you just need to memorize adawatul jaz that go before it and it becomes majzum. Clear? Whereas the fi'l mudari, when those two are not there, the grammarians they say, litajarrudi. Tajarrud means what? When you tear something off something or you strip it off it. So the fi'l mudari here, it's stripped off. From what? Adawatul Jazmi and Adawatul Nasb. It's free from it. So Yusafiru. Is there any anything before it? No. Sorry, Yusafiru. Is there anything before it? From Adawatul Jazmi or Adawatul Nasbi? No, there isn't. So what we say here is Marfu'. Fi'il Mudari' Marfu'. Litajarrudihi min aamilin yaqtadhi nasbahu aw aamilin yaqtadhi jazmahu. Fa'idha qulta, for example, if you say, Lan Yusafira. Ha, pay attention now. The word yusafira has something gone before it now. The word len went before it, right? And then len is from the amil yaqtadi nasbahu. It's a amil, it's a factor, it's a thing that forces it to become what? Mansub. For example, look at the word uh, yusafira. Len yusafira, you say. Here, when we look at the word yusafira, or we, we grammatically analyze it, we will say, Yusafira is mansubun wa alamatu nasbihi al fatha. It's mansub. Why? Because a the amil of adawat al nasb, one of them entered it. The word lan, whenever it goes before a fi'l mudari', what does it do to it? It, becomes, it, makes it, it makes it mansub. So here now what happened? Taghayyar al amil. Taghayyar al amil. The amil changed here from now. What did it change from? It changed it from its what it used to be, which was raf, and it made it into mansub. Good. Instead of lam, put the word lam before it. The fi'l mudari'. So don't say lam. So this author said, look, wa huwa lam. فَإِذَا قُلْتَ لَمْ يُسَافِرْ Keep looking at the ra, because that's what you have to do. I'rab was what? Wa taghiru al-awakhir. Awakhir al-kalima. Look at the ending of the word, the ra. The ra, what happened to it here right now? What happened to it here right now? It became majzum. Why did it become majzum? Because the word lam went before it. 
And the word lam, when it goes before a fi'l mudari', what does it do to it? It makes it majzoom. So this is an amil, a factor, a thing that forces it to become what? For it to change. So, so taghayyara halu. The word yusafiru, it used to be, and then it changed into yusafira, and then now it changed into what? Yusafir. The reason is because, the reason why it changed is, ha. Huh? من الرفع أو النصب إلى الجزم لتغير العامل بعامل آخر يقتضي جزمه وهو لم تود لم فوستي